Our text here is the third epistle of John, only one chapter, but we'll begin here in verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Have you ever visited the church of Diotrephes? <laughs> Interesting portion of scripture there that we just read. Um, there's a lot of church buildings out there, church corporations when you get right down to it. Um, and they have a man there in the pulpit that uh, it's his church. It's his show. And you don't dare question him. Um, and if you're going there and you're a good little uh, parishioner, what you'll get is you'll get some pulpit mentions. That pastor will uh, he'll mention you from the pulpit and he'll you know preach a sermon and he'll say, kind of reminds me of the time that Brother Brian came along and he helped me out when uh, a lot of you other people didn't. And uh, Brother Brian, he's a young man that I think we can all emulate and learn from his fine example of how much he loves the Lord and how much he wants to serve the Lord and, and whatever else. And um, I've had those times. And Brother Brian here, he's really studied the Bible version issue and he's made documentary videos and things about it. And uh, I suggest you watch Brother Brian's videos and he does a really good job and everything's great. Until I, uh, you know, go against the system, all of a sudden it's not uh, Brother Brian anymore. It's uh, don't talk about the heretic. <laughs> and uh, I've had that happen too. Let me get back out of this spot here. Back here walking around in the woods looking for any kind of storm damage. But um, <clears throat> one of the ways that you get the good pulpit mention is if you're faithful to the church. You're there every time the doors are open. And uh, if there's work that needs to be done around that church building, brother, you're there. Your name is the first name on the list when it comes to volunteering. I mean, mowing the yard and painting the walls and refinishing the floors. And, and uh, I remember, you know, myself and a bunch of other young men the one time at the one church I went to. And they had this floor that needed to be torn up. And they got it up, but they, I guess the people that had put it down, they used too much glue or something like this. And we had to scrape this floor, you know, and we had these little scrapers and we're down on our knees, you know, scraping the floor. And boy, I was a good Catholic that day, you know. Boy, you know, the I could just feel the years of purgatory just falling off. <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, brother, you know, it was such a blessing to see Brother Ryan and Brother, the other two that were with me. And, and uh, oh, it was so neat to see these young men in there on their hands and knees, scraping the floor while the rest of you were at home watching sports on TV. And if we could only learn from the blessed example of our dear brothers here. <laughs> and then, you know, I <clears throat> went up to the pastor after a while, you know, and said, uh, uh, God's calling me elsewhere. I, I don't belong here. And, um, you know, I've been studying the Word of God. And there's no scripture for church buildings and things. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Um, okay, well, uh, are you an atheist now? No, I just said I'm studying the Bible. Okay. Okay, all right, all right, well, um, okay, well, uh, are you leaving this week? Well, yeah, I think I'm going, okay, all right, well, um, there's the door. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for all the time I spent here and all the hours and everything else. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, well, you know, it, doesn't, it didn't work out. Okay, go. And then you see him at the store, and it's, you know, you look over, and you see him, and you go, hey, and, you know, walk past them and then... <laughs> oh, we were brethren at one point in time and I got pulpit mentions, but now I'm uh, the devil's uh, right-hand man or something, apparently. Uh, but, uh, you say, what's the problem there? Well, brethren, again... Whenever you deal with something where God tells you, gives you specific instructions in the New Testament, this is the way church is supposed to be done. First of all, I believe in multiple elders, not just a one-man pastor show. Uh, last 
Baptist church that I left, uh, I was told in no uncertain terms that this is, quote, my church and my pulpit, and I will say what goes here or goes on here. Um, my church. Huh. I thought Jesus Christ was the head of the church. Hmm. Oh, but, you know, I should be more accountable to people because who, am I, who is Brian Denlinger accountable to? Um, well, I guess I should have a board of trustees that I can be accountable to. That would be better than just being here on YouTube and having to be accountable to my viewers and to the Lord. And, you know, I mean, it's much better to have those, you know, the, the whole thing there and you report to the government and all that stuff with 501c3, which they do. I'm not making that up, not trying to be mean. Uh, that's the truth of the matter. But, um, you know, and again, um, we're there helping out at this Baptist church and, okay, it's time to leave. Need to go. And the uh, Lord's calling us elsewhere. Just angry. Gave him the keys to the place where we were staying. It was, didn't say a word. Just turned around and walked away from me. My, how things change. You see, multiple elders are necessary to keep it from becoming a one-man show and keep it from becoming this prideful thing where all of a sudden these guys uh, just get all full of themselves, you know, and they start to teach false doctrine, but nobody can say anything because he's the guy that owns the church building and, you know, he's the president and CEO of the corporation there. It's a problem. So that's the first problem with church buildings. That's why God never said build a church building. Right? In the New Testament, you won't see that one time. Right now, we're going through the book of 2 Chronicles, and we're reading about how Solomon built a house for the Lord and, and everything. Decked it with gold and all this stuff and precious stones and silver and everything else. This, this is overlaid with gold and all this. And what happened to it? It went pagan in one generation. Literally, one generation. King Solomon started worshiping other gods, but his strange wives, his outlandish women, Women from outside of Israel, uh, interracial marriage, you know? And, um, you know, they brought in their strange gods. Hmm, it's a problem. But you see, now, now we can do it different. You see, in the New Testament, uh, yeah, they didn't have actual church buildings that were Christian. Yes, that's true, Brother Brian. But, um, you know, we can have church buildings and it's fine and it's wonderful okay did christians have them a thousand years ago uh, one thousand years ago well catholics did and uh, no, i didn't say catholics i said christians christians aren't catholics um no christians did not have church buildings at any time throughout church history they didn't they just simply didn't because what you have is you have diatrophies a one-man pastor show and he thinks that he's got the right to say what goes on there and he can kick people out cast them out of the church and say you're out you're gone if I see you on the streets I'll shun you you know and um, I mean don't get me wrong you have a right to kick out heretics certainly somebody comes in and they're bringing all kinds of satanic wicked stuff trying to get people back under the law trying to get people away from the resurrection trying to get people thinking that they can lose their salvation, they have to work for their salvation and everything else, you know, yeah, kick them out. Absolutely. But uh, when you're dealing with people, well, I just don't like that guy. I just don't like what he says, and I don't like this, and I don't like that, and I'll just, I'll close the doors to my little church building. Not supposed to be that way. So I'm going to leave some sermons here at the end of this video. If you're a new subscriber and you don't know what the Bible teaches about, church buildings in the New Testament, where we are currently at at uh, this point in time, um, you can watch these. And one other point I want to make about the church building issue is you have a double life. The one that you live while you're in church and the one that you live when you're not in church. Uh, that's a problem. You see, the New Testament teaches that we are the body of Christ. And you're in church 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now there's the assembling of the saints. That's another thing. But that assembling of the saints is not the same thing as being in fellowship with the saints as far as we're all one body. You know, you don't walk outside of the church building and all of a sudden there's, you know, a little sound of thunder, you know, and, and you're now out of the body of Christ or something. 
No, you're in the church. You are in the body of Christ. The church and the body of Christ are synonymous, you see? Same thing, said different ways. So it's just very dangerous, this whole church building thing. That's why I've you know, kicked it for so many years now. But I see people and they're coming along and why are you against church buildings? Why are you against church buildings? Well, because every single one, I don't care how quote unquote good it is, they all have cliques. Every single one, you have the pastor's inner circle, the little diatrophies, you know, fellowship, and you go and you be part of that thing. And, and uh, boy, as long as you're doing good, you get the pulpit mentions, you get all the nice things. You go over to the pastor's house after the service is over on Sunday, you know what I mean? And you get the good meals and, and you sit around and you laugh about this and that and you get to gossip about other church people. Uh, <laughs> you know, don't don't even tell me about it. Don't, oh, my church isn't that way. You're a liar. You're a liar. Uh, every church I've ever been to, they're all the same. Every single one of them. Um, oh, mine isn't. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, probably don't even have a real name, you know, real face. Uh, can't prove it. You just tell me, oh, no, ours isn't that way, and I'm supposed to say, oh, well, I'm sorry, I'll just change my stands. Uh, no, I'm not changing my stands. That's why I have to tell people, stay away from the church buildings. Stay away from them. I mean, you can go. I don't care. You can do whatever you want to do. But you'll be disappointed if you're truly searching for the truth, if you truly want a separated life, a life where you're pleasing God. Um, at one point in time, you might have been able to go to church buildings and feel some pretty decent fellowship there. But they, they've never been right. They've always had contention and issues and things. So, I have a little intruder over here. You saw, caught a little glimpse of him. There he is. Right over there. Our poor son here, you know, he's... He's been scarred all of his life because he has never been to Sunday school or anything else. He just gets taught the Bible, you know, at home because we talk about the Bible all the time. He knows most of the old hymns by heart because we sing them all the time. Oh, there he went. Losing sight of him here. See how unhappy he is? He's, he's socially very awkward, you know, because he hasn't had a church building to shape his brain. So, uh... There he goes. So that will be it for this video, my little rant here. But uh, you do need to understand that it is a doctrinal issue. It isn't just a matter of opinion. And you can have a church building and whatever else. Um, you have a church building, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have lots of problems. So um, watch the sermons at the end to get more information on why church buildings are wrong. Um, again, meet anywhere you want to, but drop all the trappings of the... Sunday best and 10% tithe and the one man pastor and all the other stuff do it the New Testament way and you'll be fine All right, you'll still have the issues. You'll still have some fighting, but not like when you have church buildings Okay Check out the videos at the end. Thank you for watching